So you've just returned home from your latest shoot, and you've got all of these images in front of you. You need to make your way through them and decide on which ones are your best. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to cull your images, which is the art of taking a big collection of images and marking the ones that we want to keep. In Lightroom, we use pick flags to do just that. We'll go through our images and give the ones we love a pick flag. Then, once we've reviewed them all, we'll filter down to the images with a pick and keep working with them. I've got my latest shoot here, and let's say that this image that I have selected is one that I want to keep. I want to edit it later on. I'll go ahead and give it a flag by pressing the letter P on the keyboard. Now, we've added a flag to it, and you can see this flag show up in the thumbnail in the grid view and also at the bottom of Lightroom. Now, if you can't see the flag here on grid view, you just need to go up to the view, grid view style, and tick show extras. That'll make the flag show on top of the image. And if you can't see it at the bottom, it's probably because your film strip is too small. You can actually position your mouse cursor here at this dividing line and click it to make the thumbnails larger. Now, the bottom of Lightroom is called the film strip, and we can just use it to scroll through our shoot and work our way through our images. In either case, I like to keep both of these options turned on so that I can always see which of my images have a flag attached to it. These flags that we've just added to our first image are super simple. They're just a way to mark the images to keep. Let me give you a sneak preview of why they're so important. When you're finished flagging your latest shoot, we can just click this drop down box here in the lower right corner of Lightroom and choose flagged. Notice now that we're only looking at the image that we just gave a flag to. The original images are still in our Lightroom catalog, but filtering just lets us cut down and focus on the images we have flagged. When we want to switch back to looking at all of our images, I'll just click on the filter again and choose filters off. So our process is this for working through a shoot. Add a flag to the images we want to edit later on and then filter so that we can focus on them. Now, when I'm reviewing my images, I usually want to be doing it with a nice big view of the images. So I'll go into single image view by double clicking on another image. Now we have that image in full view. I can really get a good look at it and decide if it's worth editing or not. From this screen, I can still use the keyboard shortcut P to add pick to an image. And you can see that Lightroom says flag is a pick and we have given it a flag. Now I just switched out of grid view where I can see many images at the same time to single image view. If we want to make it easy to jump back and forth between those views, one thing that I like to do is go to view, show toolbar, or press the letter T on my keyboard. Now with this in mind, we can click between some of these different views to jump back and forth between them. I can click on this icon to jump back to grid view if that's what I prefer, or click on this icon to jump back to single image view, which Lightroom calls loop view. So basically, just work the way that works best for you. Oftentimes, it's looking at an image nice and large whenever you're trying to cull and choose your favorite images. You can always use the film strip down here at the bottom of Lightroom to switch between an image. Now, there's also what's called the reject flag, which is a way of marking an image so that we know it's rejected. If I switch back to grid view and press the letter X on my keyboard, it'll set the image as rejected. You can see on the film strip that it's been grayed out and it has this little black flag with an X through it. And in the grid view, once I click off of it, it has the same indicators. Now, to me, it doesn't make a lot of sense to use the reject flags. I either give an image a pick flag or just skip giving it a flag at all. But I want to teach you all about Lightroom and then let you choose the tools that work well for you. So I wanted to go ahead and show this to you. Now, whatever flag status an image has, we can remove it if we just press the letter U on the keyboard. If it's got a pick flag or a reject flag, it's now been removed. So if I jump back to this image that we just gave the reject flag, I'll press the letter U on my keyboard, and now the flag has been removed. The same thing would work if we chose the image that has a pick flag attached to it. So basically, images have three statuses. They either have a pick flag, which is what I recommend using, they have a reject flag, which I don't typically use, or they have no flag at all, which is how every image comes into Lightroom. One thing you might want to know is that we can also set the flag status from the menu. If we go to the photo, set flag menu, we can choose flagged, unflagged, or rejected. One last thing, let's take a look at a speed trick. Let's turn on auto advance. I'm going to go ahead and double click on an image to view it nice and large. One way to turn on auto advance is to just press the caps lock key on my keyboard, or you can go up to the photo, auto advance option and check it so that it's turned on.
Now, when we turn on Auto Advance, as soon as I press one of my keyboard shortcuts, as you'll see here, such as pressing the letter P, it automatically moves on to the next image. And I hope you can see why this is so powerful. All we have to do is kind of keep our fingers on the U and P keys in my case, and I can jump between images really quickly. So if I don't want to choose this image, I'll just press the letter U, and then I'm on to the next image. Now I can press P and it'll give it a flag. I just use the keyboard shortcut U to skip an image. So whether or not it has a flag, it'll automatically skip to the next one. If I like an image, I'll press P, and if I don't want to give it a flag, I'll just press U to move on to the next image. You can get through a shoot really quickly this way. This is always my first pass through my images. I'm just using those two keyboard shortcuts with auto advance turned on in order to work my way through a fresh shoot really quickly. At the end of course, you can always come back to your filter option and switch it back to flagged to see only the images that we've given a pick flag to. That's about it. In this tutorial, you learned how to use flags to mark your favorite images and to do it quickly, best of all. Once they're marked, we can just filter to them and keep working away. So now it's your turn. Go ahead and work your way through a shoot with flags if you've never used them before. Let me know if you run into any problems with a comment on the video. If you like this video, make sure and give it a thumbs up and then press subscribe to stay in touch with Lightroom Love. Let me know if you have any questions at all in the comments and if there's anything else you want to learn about Lightroom.